Good morning, every good morning, everybody, and thank you for adjusting to our, our, our special time, which is unique for today. Have we finished now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if members of the public are aware, but we've had a a well a tragedy amongst one of our senior staff and. Uh, and the lady concerned is having her funeral or celebration of life service today. And uh, we didn't want to let any of the public down or the applicants down. And we wanted to give a judgment today as we promised. So what we've done is, and if you've seen it, we're, we're going to try and um, we're going to try and get through the first three cases and then effectively take a long lunch break. Um, and so we will be going this afternoon from four to whatever time it takes to finish. But we felt this was a, a, a large, it was very helpful way of getting a lot of the staff and members of the public who wanted to pay respects to our uh, deceased colleague. Uh, and so it's an attempt. And we thank you for, we thank, I thank members and officers and members of the public and applicants for, for bearing with us because of this. Uh, I would ask um, I would ask um, people to be as brief as they can, and that's members and people who are speaking, because we don't want the repetition of uh, of things being said time and time again. So, if you can be aware that we uh, do want to close for lunch at twelve thirty, if it's at all possible, uh, but of course we will. Everybody will have the appropriate hearing that they're entitled to. Okay, we now move on to fire safety. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we're not expecting a fire alarm this morning, so if it does sound, please leave by the nearest available exit, which is the way you came in, or one in this back corner over here, and congregate in the front car park by the exit barrier, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, have you got any uh, apologies for absence? We have apologies from Councillor Lisa Stubbs and we have Councillor David Ambrose Smith here as a substitute. And that's it. Okay, uh, declarations of interest. Councillor Edwin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a potential prejudicial interest in item number uh, five as I am trustee of uh, a charity that has an interest in this. In this. So I will leave the room. You're going. You're going to leave the room. I, and, I, I have to leave the room. And, and you're you're asking to be recalled when the item's finished. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fine. <laughs> we now move to item number four, which is the chairman's announcements. Um, I beg your pardon. I've missed the minutes. Uh, members will have read the minutes. And is there any reason why I shouldn't later on in the day sign those off as an accurate record of our previous meeting? No? Okay, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, num item number four is Chairman's announcements. Uh, I'm pleased to say that in the last year, we actually uh, completed, or, or they were completed, 154 affordable housing. And in the last year, uh, that's the that's the highest it's been for the, in the last ten years. Uh, in addition to that, another four hundred and seventy-two houses were built, and it's worthy of record that we do have not only a five-year land supply, we have a seven-year land supply, and so that's all good news. Uh, you may remember that our much appreciated head of planning, Rebecca Saunt left us uh, at our last meeting. And I'm pleased to say we've got a new manager starting on the 1st of October um, and uh, Simon Ellis will be starting on the 1st of October. Third. 31st, 31st I'm told. Uh, that's the 31st of October. Okay. Um, and uh, I have asked you to, uh, try and keep things fairly concise while you're speaking and will speakers who are not used to speaking here 
please do their utmost to try and speak as near to the uh, microphone as possible so uh, your speech can be recorded and also it is quite likely that the air conditioning will be on and that of course would interfere with speech. So that's my uh, chairman's announcements for today and we now move on to item number five uh, and uh, the officer should give a You haven't got a copy of the agenda. We will, Caroline is bringing you an agenda. And we're, we're now about to go on to item number five, which is the first, uh, first of the items for decision. Okay, we're into the officer's report on item number five. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. So agenda item number five is an outline application for the demolition of existing buildings and erection of up to 210 dwellings, including self-build and affordable housing, one community building and associated infrastructure. All matters are reserved in this application apart from access. Um, I do have one matter of housekeeping um, in terms of some minor changes to the proposed wording of conditions two and three, which are listed at the end of my report. Um, I would ask um, if members are minded to approve that they um, accept the change to condition two to say approval of the details in brackets, excluding the community building, close brackets, um, and then the remainder of the condition. And then on condition three, um, the removal of the words, the site of. So that would read approval of the details of the community building and then continue. Um, and I'm happy to discuss that further if anyone has any questions. Uh, so the above map shows the outline of the site in red. You can see the development envelope in black and areas of uh, conservation uh, sorry, not conservation area, uh, tree protection in green uh, to the north.
apologies, Chair. I'm not sure what's happened that was working this morning. We're just going to get IT. So what's your suggestion that we should do? Are we going to, is it going to be fixed in the next minute or two or five? I, I think we ought to wait until it's fixed. I do apologise, Member of the Public, but we, we have a five minute delay. Chair, yeah. thank you. We're good. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Let's hope technology is uh, controlled. Uh, please start again when you're ready. Thank you, Chair. Apologies for that. Um, so, um, agenda item five, outline application for the demolition of existing buildings and erection of up to 210 dwellings, including self-build and affordable housing one community building and associated infrastructure and all matters are reserved except from access. So the application site can be seen outlined in red. The development envelope um, uh, surrounds the site to the north and the east, and that's the black line. Uh, the above image shows an aerial view of the site. The site's located to the southwest edge of Soham, adjoining the settlement boundary along its northern and eastern boundaries. So it is situated within the countryside as identified within the local plan. To the north of the site, uh, there is a public right of way, which is Cherry Tree Lane. And to the northeast corner of the site is the Cherry Tree Public House. The Hopkins development um, can be seen to the north of the site as well. Um, and to the southwest of the site is to the south and west of the site is open, open and bounded by fields with a public right of way running along the, the western boundary and Orchard Row, the southern boundary. The site itself is open agricultural land with the buildings of downfield farms set in the centre. So the proposal uh, seeks outline planning permission for up to 210 dwellings and one community building together with public open, uh, open space, landscapes buffer and attenuation basin and drain and drainage infrastructure. The site area is 10.3 hectares or 25.4 acres. 
The application also proposes either 28 or 30% affordable housing, depending on whether the community building comes forward, and 5% self-build custom build plots. The proposal is to provide for a single access onto Fordham Road, north of the junction with Orchard Row, and a secondary emergency access would be provided to the south boundary of the site. So I'll just try to identify those for members. So the main axis is here, and the emergency axis is here. Um, the proposal also includes the potential provision of a community building depending on a provider coming forward. Uh, the proposal is that this would revert to an increase in affordable housing should the community building not be realised. And just to remind members that all matters are reserved apart from access for this development. So these are some images of the site. Uh, the top row is um, views from the corner of Orchard Row and to the south views from Cherry Tree Lane, sorry, to the bottom of the screen. Uh, views from Cherry Tree Lane. The main considerations of this application are the principle of development, affordable housing, self-build, residential amenity, visual amenity, highways matters, flood risk and drainage, ecology and climate change. So in terms of the principle of development, the council's position regarding the five-year housing land supply is set out in full within my officer report. I'm not going to repeat that because it is quite lengthy and members are already aware of the details. On the question of the principle of development, in this instance, it's considered that the principle in this location on the edge of one of the market towns is acceptable. With regard to the principle of development for a community building, Policy Growth 3 sets out that development proposals will be expected to provide or contribute towards the cost of providing infrastructure and community facilities made necessary by the development. So the principle of development for the community building is also considered to be acceptable. As set out in full within section 7.20 to 7.27 of my officer report, the proposal would provide either 28 or 30% affordable housing, depending on whether the community building comes forward. The proposal under either scenario is considered to be at or at least very close to compliance with policy HOU3 of the local plan, with just minor weight applied against scenario A due to its very slight non-compliance non-policy compliant position. Such negative weight is reduced further to very minor weight by virtue of the council's own viability assessment. That said, for both scenarios, the provision of a significant number of affordable housing units is as a matter of principle, a considerable benefit to the scheme and that is applied significant positive weight. The proposal would also include 5% self-build properties um, and these matters would be secured via a section 106 agreement. Moving on to residential amenity, the change of the use of the site to residential development will cause changes to the area in terms of outlook and there may be some impacts from increased noise and traffic movement from the site. However, this is not to be significant such that planning permission should be refused on that basis. It's considered that any impacts on residential amenity um, in a more localised um, way could be adequately mitigated with adequate separation distances to existing properties and appropriate heights and designs which would come forward at a reserve matters stage. Impacts such as noise and disturbance from construction works can be controlled through the inclusion of conditions, which restricts the construction hours and the requirements for a construction environmental management plan. Um, and while the details of this application, so the appearance, layout, scale and landscaping would be considered at a reserve matters stage, it's considered that an appropriately designed scheme could be brought forward, which prevents detrimental impacts to the amenity of adjacent occupiers. Moving on to visual impacts, although this is an outline form with all matters reserved apart from access, the visual impact of development of the visual impact of the development of potentially up to 210 dwellings must be assessed in principle. Uh, the applicant has submitted an illustrative master plan for the site, which indicates how the proposal could be accommodated. The indicative master plan shows large areas of open space and landscaped buffers to sensitive site boundaries. The plan indicates that dwellings could be set away from the site boundaries to help assimilate the development into its surroundings. In terms of density, the gross density of the site is 21 dwellings per hectare. The illustrative master plan indicates large areas of open space, which means that the developable area of the site 
um, could have a density between 35 to 40 dwellings per hectare. However, the density isn't set and it would be dependent on the detailed design which would come forward at a reserve matters stage. It may be that certain areas of the site have lower densities than others, depending on how this is laid out. The application is for up to 210 dwellings and it would need to be satisfactorily demonstrated at reserve matters stage that this number of dwellings could be appropriately achieved with good quality design. The illustrative master plan broadly demonstrates that approximately 210 dwellings could be accommodated at the site and the applicant has recognised uh, within correspondence with myself that in order to achieve this there would be a need for a predominant number of smaller units. The final number of dwellings would be determined at the reserve matters stage and will be informed by all material planning considerations and planning policies. The applicants also submitted a landscape visual impact assessment alongside the application. The LVIA notes that there will be direct views of the proposed development from local road networks, depending on the absence or presence of intervening vegetation. The LVIA concludes that the development would result in limited impacts at localised levels and that these impacts would likely be mitigated, that, sorry, would likely be limited to the site area and the immediate context. The LVIA sets out that the views of the development can be filtered through the use of soft landscaping and would be seen against the existing settlement edge. The LVIA notes that the landscape and visual impacts would be limited and considers that the proposed development is acceptable. It's considered at this stage that the illustrative master plan submitted indicates sufficient space could be provided in order to accommodate high quality soft landscaping within the site. Moving on to highways matters, the application proposes a primary ve vehicular access onto Fordham Road and a secondary emergency access from the unnamed road to the south of the site. The emergency access would be secured with collapsible bollards and those two accesses are, no are indicated by the red arrows. Uh, the proposed number of car and cycle spaces in accordance with policy COM 8 would be assessed as part of a reserve matters application and does not form part of the assessment of this application as detailed design elements are not being considered at this stage. However, based on the illustrative master plan, it's considered that the required parking could be accommodated on the site. The transport assessment team have noted that there are a number of key facilities within Soham which are within walking, within acceptable walking distance and cycling distance from the application site. They advise that footways are present on both sides of the road, which provide access to the town centre and that public rights of way will be maintained as part of the, the proposal. There are no objections from Local Highways Authority or the County Council Transport Assessment Team. The County Council Transport Assessment Team have requested the upgrading of a nearby bus stop and financial contributions for its maintenance. They've also requested monetary contributions for capacity improvements to the A142 Fordham Road and A1123 roundabouts, and these can be secured through um, Section 106. In terms of flood risk and drainage, the application proposes a sustainable drainage system to control surface water runoff. Rainwater would be dealt with via a piped drainage system that would outfall into e an elongated wet attenuation pond, which would also act as a swale in low flow conditions. This would outflow into the existing watercourse to the north of the site with a restricted outflow. The Lead Local Flority, Flood Authority have reviewed the information submitted and removed their initial objections to the scheme. The Environment Agency have also reviewed the proposals and raised no objection. Anglian Water have no objection to the proposed development and have not sought any financial contributions. In terms of ecology, the Wildlife Trust have reviewed the information provided um, and they've given us a number of comments in relation to achieving a net gain on site. However, detailed design of the site would be submitted at a reserve matters stage. It has been concluded from the information submitted that a 10% net gain could be achieved. Um, and we consider that it's appropriate to append conditions which require a comprehensive scheme of biodiversity enhancements to be submitted as part of a reserve matters application. In terms of climate change, it's considered that an appropriate scheme could be submitted at a detailed design stage which maximises energy efficiency and incorporates renewable low carbon energy sources. It's recommended that we append a condition which requires that prior to the commencement of development an energy and sustainability strategy for the development is submitted. 
and based on the information submitted at this stage it's considered that an appropriate scheme could come forward at detailed design stage which maximizes energy efficiency and incorporates renewable low carbon energy sources. In terms of the Section 106, um, this would secure affordable housing, lifetime homes, self-build, public open space, the drainage, uh, drainage systems, community facility or afford an increase in affordable housing, a, a contribution to the Soham Commons, an upgrade to the bus stop and financial contribution and financial contributions to the A142 Fordham Road, A1123 roundabout, as well as education contributions. It's considered that the principle of development in this location on the edge of one of the market towns is acceptable. The provision of a community of facility alongside this development is also considered to be acceptable in principle. The application would provide either 28% affordable housing and the provision of a community building or 30% affordable housing if the community building is not realised. The proposal is considered being in compliance or at least very close to with policy HOU3 and the significant number of affordable housing units represents a benefit of the scheme which has applied significant positive weight. It's considered that an appropriate scheme could be brought forward with regard to residential amenity and visual impacts. The application proposes appropriate access arrangements and would secure the upgrading of a nearby bus stop and financial contributions to road infrastructure. With regards to flood risk and drainage, the proposals have been reviewed by the relevant statu statutory consultees who confirm that there are no objections. The Wildlife Trust are content that the outstanding matters relating to ecology can be dealt with by way of an appropriately worded con condition at, and addressed at the reserve matters stage. So on balance, the proposal is considered to be broadly compliant with the relevant planning policies and that there will be no significant adverse impacts that would weigh against the proposal. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to the signing of the section 106. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for a comprehensive report. Uh, I've got um, uh, an objector, Gordon A. Scott. Would you like to sit, come up, Mr. Scott? And take a seat, uh, make sure your microphone is switched on and you've got five minutes. And then if you, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, away you go, Mr. Scott. Well, I'd like to start by finding myself uh, uh, objecting to the gentleman who opened the uh, the program he's all biased for the support of the ongoing more and more houses being built in Sun. the more the better as far as he's concerned i'd like to say i extremely object to a once beautiful village that i moved into 50 years ago being turned into a large disruptive town the place that i lived in was a lovely beautiful village and planning permission has got out of hand in as much that even the previous mayor got planning permission on green property, green land. Um, we're talk, talking people, these hypocrites, about global warming. I'd like to point out that the moment you grant planning permission for one house, the moment the bucket has gone into the ground and dug the first hole to the time that the house is built and then a family have moved in, this is all within the first year, 